Welcome to another episode of the Soothing Semantics Podcast. I am your host, Rafi Pinsky. Make sure to subscribe, smash the like button, leave your comments. For all of your real estate needs in South Florida, make sure to check out Rafi the Realtor on Instagram. Check out my weekly newsletter where you can find uh, everything real estate related in South Florida. And uh, I'd love to help you. So without further ado, we have a very, very exciting guest today. I'm really glad that you uh, took the time to do this. We have Brian fucking Callen on the podcast. Pretty, pretty awesome, man. So forever, <laughs> who, whoever doesn't know Brian, he's been on a multitude of shows. You've been on, you've, you've done it all, man. Mad TV, you had a seat in The Joker, um, uh, you were in The Hangover, you've, you've done quite a lot of film. It's really, really awesome having you. You're a comedian, you have the Fighter and the Kid podcast, you, you, do, you do at least three YouTube channels at this point, right? Off the Off Limits podcast. Yeah, I do Off Limits. That's my new, that's my podcast, Off Limits. So I stopped doing everything else. I'm just doing Fighter and the Kid and Off Limits. I just have to focus on two things. It's hard to focus for me on just two or three things. I've been part of being an actor, part of being in Hollywood is, you know, you, you've got to have like different sources of income, whether it's stand up and acting and podcasts. And, and it, it, it's just the way it is. But, um, I think that's a mistake sometimes. I think focusing on one thing is is if you can do it, if you can afford to do it in a way, if you can do it, it, it focusing, just drilling down on one thing and being the best at that, a lot of times is a great way to simplify your life. But that, it is, man. I, I like you know? it. Is. I, I focus on two things right now, real estate and podcasting. Those are my bread and butter. Um, well, well, I'm very to- impressed with you. I'm actually very impressed. First of all, I bought a house in South Florida. I would have, uh, if I'd known... I would have uh, I would have told I would have called you because I know you're good at your job, uh, and the reason I know you're good at your job is because I've never had anybody. Uh, you 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 were asking me to do the podcast, and I you know I get a lot of requests, but I never do them. And but I was very impressed with how much research you were doing. You, like you watched everything on me, and I was like, this dude is a m- monster. Like you just you just are you're one of those guys who's just you you know you're gonna will your success into existence, and it's great. So. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. that, man. Thank you, bro. There's a listen. There's a lot of other stuff I could have watched. I didn't watch everything. Dude, there's a lot of shit. I mean, <laughs> t- 10, 10, what do you have? You have 10 po- I've watched yeah. a nice amount though. I spent, I spent a good seven hours watching podcasts Amazing. with you. I mean, at least, God, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Oh my God. All right. It was great, dude. They're so entertaining. I had a great time. You, but so for whoever doesn't know, Brian's not a great driver because he's, Part Fil- I know you're actually not part Filipino, but you were born in Mil- Manila. Right. They uh, they pronounced his name Brian Karen, and uh, he he sp- <laughs> Brian Karen. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. Yeah. When, Brian when, Karen. when 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 Andrew Schultz made that joke, dude, I was dying. Right. <laughs> hilarious. And Andrew's so, so hilarious. He's one of dude. He's one of the funniest comedians. He really is. He's, he's also a great guy. Andrew's a great guy, man. It's a good person. So. I've heard. I've heard. Um, I watch. I've watched a, a lot of flagrant episodes. And ironically enough, I don't watch that many podcasts these days. But I've watched a lot of flagrants. He's just so entertaining. Uh, yeah. So, so born in the Philippines, you've your your dad was supposedly an international banker, even though Patrick Bet David's not convinced. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very intriguing to talk about the CIA. But you know, I mean, uh, I have a feeling that. Um, if most of us knew what people in the CIA did, we wouldn't be as impressed. It just sound, it's just fun for movies. So. Right. Because there's a lot of pushing paper, a lot of sitting around. Well, you can be an analyst in the CIA. You can be somebody who, who uh, is an asset. So you're somebody who gathers information. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 somebody can come to you from the CIA and say, hey, you work in this bank. Um, you have access to this guy and we're trying to trying to get this person to defect or give us information on something, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. So, I mean, I mean the, the intelligence apparatus does a whole lot of things. It's a huge bureaucracy. And the question is now, are they overstepping their bounds? Are they, are they, I mean, who are they and where are they and who do they report to and how much money do they get? And, and are they spying on Americans? What is this stuff? What's going on here? Is it, well, how, how, how strong is the firewall between our domestic uh, agencies like the FBI and the CIA. These are important questions. And I think that um, 
I, you know, what, how, what kind of collateral cooperation or collateral collusion is going on between our intelligence apparatus and let's say big tech and the media? I don't know. But these are these are questions that are out there. I don't like being conspiratorial here. I just think that I worry when these massive organizations seem to have, you know, when I have people who I from, let's say, the NSA tell me that it's very easy to hack into my phone and turn my microphone on and turn my camera on. I kind of go, hey, man, that's uh, I'm not saying they do that. I'm just saying they can do that. So. Yeah, can you? There, there's just so many weird things people do on an everyday basis. Where if someone tapped into their phone, I mean, the, <laughs> it would either yeah. be very embarrassing, very funny, very scary. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, this is this is what it is, man. Like people can really spy on your life, and you just kind of have to live it in this blissful ignorance, hoping that they don't. Yeah, the problem with doing that is, you know, there's, I think Albert Camus in, in 1900 said that um, man, in the, it wasn't 1900, it was some, some probably later, but but he said, um, in the 21st century, political and philosophical, not having, not being politically or philosophically committed is, is not a luxury you can afford, you know, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, right. but, you know, um, you, 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 you have to, and you know you're Israeli, right? You you fought in the IDF, or you you were you were. Well, I'm, my, my I grew up in America, but most of my family lives there, and I yeah. I serve there. Yeah, yeah. So as a Jew, as a, as a, as an Israeli, you know, it, you you in, go ahead and enjoy being historically ignorant, and uh, and and just hoping for the best. Let's see how that works out for you. It's not going to work out yeah. too well, but no, yeah, there's doesn't. a lot of. It just yeah, doesn't. Right? That, that and that's that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. You know, it's it, when you look at someone like Netanyahu, and there's a lot to criticize about Netanyahu. But, Definitely. You know, but 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 having said that, his father raised him to be a realist. His father said, "This is the way the world is. It comes down to physics. You can be religious; it's great and all that, but it comes down to physics, man. It comes down to, you know, whether you like it or not." People want to kill you, and you better wake up to that fact. And oh, by the way, your brother was just was killed in Entebbe and all that stuff. And I think that with Netanyahu, what what October seventh said and was glaringly obvious is that if you if the Jews didn't have a homeland, they that October seventh would have been um, that you would have had a whole bunch of October sevenths before and after and a lot of mimicry that same day. So, you know. Um, I guess it's funny, by the way, Brian, I didn't even want to get into the, the Israel discussion until later down the episode. I wanted to talk more about you. <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm, I'm boring. But, I, but, I, but I mean, I'm, all I'm trying to say, is, you know, we can we can skip through it. All I'm trying to say is that, you know, um, that 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 is that is why if you pick up a history book, that's why the Zionist movement was born. It came out of the Russian ghettos. It, 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 life became impossible. You had no recourse. When a czar yeah. decided that the economy sucked, who do we blame? The Jews. And then that's what pogrom is. Is it comes from from Russia? That it was that, that was when he'd come in and let's tear the fucking synagogue down and kill whoever we want. And you had no recourse. So anyway, sorry. But I that's all I'm saying. We'll, we'll get in. We'll, you, gotta be, I, you, gotta, you just got to be, you just got to be, um, people can't be naive. I'm very happy to, to discuss this further. I, I really do hope that if you, when you have a moment, if you can watch that episode, I've been, you know, I've, I've sent you. Yes. If you, if you do have a moment, there's a lot on my channel. Listen, I know you, you know, you, you have your life. I don't expect you to to sit there and watch all my shit. No, but, I will. I'm but, sure it's uh, very. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of it. Of course, I have a lot to learn, but I, I really at least that, if you watch anything, that one episode, I, I would like yep. you to watch. Uh, so a lot of a lot of things about you, because I listened to the episodes you've done with Patrick, the one you did with, with Andrew. You know, what got you into comedy? For people, this is really for people that, that don't know anything about you. How did you get into comedy? Well, I was moved around constantly as a kid. I mean, here's the romantic answer. The, the 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 romantic answer is um, I was moved around a great deal as a child. So I lived in I'll give you all the countries I lived. In. I was born in the Philippines. I lived in Calcutta and Bombay of India in India. 
I then moved to uh, Lebanon, and then I moved to Pakistan, and then I moved to Lebanon again. The war broke out, and we got evacuated to Greece, and then uh, and then I lived in Saudi Arabia, and then I had to go away to boarding school in Massachusetts when I was 14, because my family, because they didn't, Saudi Arabia didn't have schools for expats past the age of 14. So I had to go find, a, so my choices were Europe, Switzerland, or uh, the United States, so I went to the United States. And uh, and then I was in boarding school for four years, and then I went to college for four years in Washington, D.C., and then I lived in New York, and then I lived in L.A. So, so by the time I, I'd never lived anywhere for more than two years um, until I was about 33 years old, 34. And so what happens when you're constantly- Last year, so that was a year, that was a year ago, not a long time ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. I like your attitude, Rafi. This is good. And so um, I think what happens when you're constantly thrown into new environments as a kid is um, you want to be you want to make friends. And the way you make friends is, um, you know, be be athletic, be a little bit athletic. Don't be the last guy picked on the team and make people laugh, make people laugh, you know, find out what they're proud of and find out what they're ashamed of and accentuate what they're proud of and hide for them what they're ashamed of. I learned this. And, you know, I, I guess I became a master in some ways at um, in just getting people to like me. And, and when you make people laugh and when you make fun of yourself, it puts them at ease and they, um, they love you. And so I love that feeling. I and it, it really helps that I love people, and it probably also helps that I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty attuned to human beings. When you love people, you you know how they operate. You you study them. You watch them. I noticed you know, that. I noticed you do. I noticed you. You're very good at that. I I t I could tell right away by the way the way you interact with people. You you compliment people, but the compliment compliments feel very genuine. You make very yeah, astute because, observations. Because I mean them. Be, be, because I mean them. Because the, the, because I see. I always look for what's good in a person. And that is not necessarily, that is not a noble, you know, say, well, it's a noble quality. First of all, it's a, it's, it was a survival instinct. It's a natural inclination. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm a good person. It just means that it became a habit. It became a, it became, maybe, maybe it's my default. My mother's the same way. But the problem is, you know, I had a billionaire friend of mine. He said, the problem with you, Brian, is that you don't think anybody's an asshole because you think everybody's like you. And so what happens is, you're the last to know that the snake is in the room. And by that time, it's too late. All of us see it right away. You know, all of us see it right away. You never see it. So I'm blind that way. I really am. And you uh, see the good, you see, you see the, you see the good and you don't really focus on the negative. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I, yeah, I guess so. I just, uh, I, yeah, I but guess I think so. that's I what I think that, that I'm to, to a degree, man, I think I might be, be kind of like that too. I, I, I wouldn't say I don't notice things because I definitely think I do. But in order to be a people person, you naturally have to see more good in somebody in order to get along with them. Because if you are always focusing on the negative, you're going to pretty much hate everybody you come in contact with. That's and right. That's, it, that's right. Now, 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 someone like like Joe Rogan, one of his strengths was that he was able to see that something was amiss very quickly. It was an uncanny. He's he's had this uncanny ability to sniff it out. He can just like go, with Liver King, oh. like with Liver King, he just Dude. blew. Well, that was you know the, the, the actually Brian obvious. Brian Liver King is a, he's not a bad guy. He's a good guy. He's a really good family yeah. man, and uh, and he's he's not a bad guy. He just was taking steroids. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, but knew, he, he, we all he knew he was been. taking steroids. I, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty damn obvious. I, I, I do think he uh, he's a good natured dude. He, I listened to to podcasts he was on. I get it. it was an insecurity he had and whatnot. But yeah. still, what he did was pretty fucked up because it was more than just the yeah. steroids. But he listened. He yes, apologized. Yes. Hopefully, yes. He's, and, uh, and you're right. I mean, I I didn't follow it that closely, but it was so obvious that he was doing, you know, not just testosterone, but whatever else. I mean, you're talking about insanity, and that's that's his own weird. Thing. But you know this guy's a multi-millionaire. He sells supplements with that guy Salatino, and uh, the whole thing was weird. And you know, I mean, it, it was weird. You know, he's he's just he wanted to be famous, and that that's that is what it is. But yeah, but but uh, but that's a good example of me being very forgiving. And other people are like, no, he was telling people to do this primal shit, and you know, and uh, he was very opinionated, and and you know, when he was doing steroids, so. 
it's false advertising. Yeah, it, it, for me, it just depends. Like, I understand in the real world, right? We've all t told white lies. And we've all told real lies. It, it, I think it just depends on how often you do it and what and what you're doing it for. You know what what these are about because nobody tells the you truth. You know, I, I, yeah, truth. yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. You're, 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 you. That's the biggest thing is like all of us. You know, you're you're lying in some way. Okay, like um. I used to always pride myself on being really honest, very honest with my friends and, and with myself. But but no, because, you know, if you really take us an inventory, it's been so much fun to write about this. I've been writing about this. Like, how are, do you, are you really a good person? Like, where, where are you lying in your life? Everybody is lying. You might be lying about the fact that, you, you know, your, your relationship, you might be lying about your career. You might be lying about that. These are very important things. One of the things I, I like at my age is, is taking that inventory and making sure that I'm always really on point that way. And it's not easy, man. It's not easy. No, it's not. It took me a long time to get to a point where I was, you know, just just dead honest with myself and dead honest with with everyone. Um, it happens all the time. You get forgiven, used. To you're forgiven if it's hard for you in the beginning. You you are. You're forgiven. It's it's hard, man. It's hard because you you want to take care of other people, and sometimes you think you have to lie to do that and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You might get in. You might be in a situation where you have to lie to yourself just to keep yourself waking up every morning because your job is such a disaster, or your relationship, whatever it might be. You know, we get ourselves into these mix-ups, um, and. Um, but but keep moving toward the truth. Keep doing it. I agree, man. I agree. Like in my in my industry in real estate, you absolutely have very integral. You have people that are very honest, and then you just have so many agents, especially in the earlier years. They do so much bullshit to try to push themselves to be seen as these hyper successful agents. They'll post all these fake properties. They'll post other people's listings. They'll you know the the girls will be on boats trying to push this this fake reality you go and look at their past sales they did three deals last year they're sitting Shit. there portraying them and this is so common and it's yeah, so it's aggravating selling, it's selling sunset thing you know that glossy oh, kind of so aggravating because they do and they they don't even it doesn't even bother them and they don't realize well, finance, that, finance is the same thing you know you've got these glossy brochures and you know come into our mutual fund a mutual fund manager you know, yeah, what about all those fees, dude? You don't beat the market ever. You know, it's hedge funds with all your fancy stuff. You, you know, people gamble, so you make a lot of money. It doesn't mean you're a good businessman. You, know, right. you might have gotten lucky. You might have had a 10-year stretch, but you got to read the fine print. You got to read the fine print. Nobody beats yeah, the It's market. a weird dance. It's like a weird dance between trusting people and not. I don't, like, I'm always skeptical of people when I meet them. I think I have a pretty good eye for it. I, I have friends that some of my best friends are my friends from high school. I'm still boys with them. They have been amazing friends from day one, dude. I'm really fucking blessed. I have even my friends here. And, and that's because of who you are, Rafi. That's because of right. who you are. So, you know, it takes two to tango. I agree. You know? I, I don't, I, you know, I, I know that that's, I, I know that's the case, Brian. Of course I have my faults, but yeah, because I, I, I care about them deeply and it, it's just, you know, it's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's yeah, it, it you know you get found out eventually. You'll get found out. You just it's just it's just this is why I always have this joke. This is why I like comedy. This is why I like fighting. This is why I love watching dance. I know it sounds weird, but you can't fake all three of those. You cannot no. fake comedy. You either got to. I I watched Jay Moore, and you don't know him, but Jay Moore was like Jay Moore is one of the most talented people in Hollywood, and his comedy is. Second to none. And I watched him last night. He's been open about it, so I can talk about it. Jay had a, a, a drug problem. He was a drug addict. And so he, he he dropped off for a little while. And he's back. He's back. Uh, he's married to Jenny Buss from the Lakers. And he's back. He did a set. Last, I love this guy. I've known Jay a long time. But he did a set last night that reminded me of where the bar is when it comes to comedy. It, like, I, you, you know, He's it's, some people like I, I was just reminded of what the difference between substance over style, real artistic expression. And I, I love that. Some things you just can't fake. You cannot be as good as Jay Moore unless you're, you know, unless you're uh, unless you, you're you're that good, unless you practice for that long, unless you hold yourself to that standard, unless you're constantly 
constantly working at it. And then even then, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard. So I love, I love that. I love, that's why I like sports. I like, uh, you can't fake it. You either make the team or you don't. You're either really good or you're not. The NFL is a great example of that. So I think it's, it's so true. You can, well, the truth is I don't really think you can fake anything. You can, you can try for a period of time. Only the idiots are going to, are going to believe you. The, the people who yeah. know better are going to, are going to fucking realize real quick. And you're going to get exposed with your pants down eventually. You know, you've said yeah. this on, on many of your things that that's, you know, even if you don't want to be honest from from, you know, a conscience standpoint, do it for your for your long term connections. If you want to be successful, whatever the case is, you're either going to go to prison, you're going to lose friends. Any friends you do have are going to be absolute shitheads. If you want, you know, I'm, listen, I'm, I just turned 30, bro. So I'm, I'm a young dude. But this is just what I'm realizing, you know, well, you won't get away with it. No. You might get away with it for a long time, but you ultimately will not get away with it. What you was won't get Jordan away Peterson? Well, what did you quoted Jordan? That's my favorite. That's my fa favorite quote. I, I love this guy. He said, in my 35 years of psychoanalysis, I've never seen anyone get away with anything even one time. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. Amen. He said, you can twist the fabric of reality for a while, but when you when you really do a forensic a forensic accounting of what happened, you can tra trace it all the way back to that fucking decision. You know, that's it. You're responsible for the condition you're in. Period. Take, yeah, take even if it's not true. Even if it's not true, it's like I love, I love his other expression. I behave as though God exists. I don't know if he does, but I behave as though he does. So good, it's a good way to look. You can do it for sure, for sure. So, so about are you? Uh, what do you think of Louis C.K. By the way, I, mean, I wanted to ask you this just off off a rip. I think he's, he's amazing. amazing. He's one of my I think favorite comedians. I think he's yeah, I think so I think I think Louis C.K. is amazing. That's all, just amazing. I don't know him, but I think he's amazing. He just doesn't seem to be in the limelight like he used to be after that whole, uh, you know, jerk off. Well, that's what situation. happens. But meanwhile, he right. wins what like Grammys. He's just undeniable. But yeah, they he's... they they. I remember they wrote him off. I remember uh, he'll have to go to Europe and try to do something. He's finished. Yeah, right. Yeah, except for you, you, except for hey NPR, you're not the real fucking world. None of you guys are the real world because the rest of us out here love laughing. We don't give a shit about what he did back then that or somebody said he did because we know life is messy and complicated. So you don't get to just cancel a human being. Fuck off, you know. He, so. He's so he's so funny, dude. He's such a funny yeah. guy. Yeah, he's amazing. The the the, the best self deprecating humor I've ever seen. I think it's it's so good. He's a, he's a master. He's a master. He's a brilliant. Absolutely brilliant guy. Yeah, it's great. Okay. So, so also, I mean, you, I have one thing, I mean, you've, you cover a lot of things on podcasts that I've seen you on, but I love when you talk about just the idea of going for it, as opposed to the vast majority of people who take the safe route, they don't kind of channel their, their inner wants, their, their desires, their goals, their aspirations. And you're, you're a big proponent of, Simply go after what you want. So I'm a huge proponent well, of that. Well, yeah, I am. I just, sometimes I worry, I, you know, when people are listening, they're like, I can't do that, dude. I've got, you know, I've got shit to do. And so I understand that. So I don't like, that. I, that that's not, so when I say things like that, you know, I was terrified of regret. So I, I was like, I have to, I have to, I can't be a banker. That's how I feel. Hard. That's how I feel, man. Yeah, that's how I feel. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta plan my escape. And um, so, don't don't think of it as um, it's not so much of a jailbreak, but it takes a long time to plan a jailbreak. It takes a long time. So just take steps, small steps, you know, and, and if you and if you can't figure out what you do want, I always say this to young men. I'm speaking to young men. I don't know. I can't speak to young women, but but I, maybe it's a human thing. But um, certainly young men, if, if you if you're confused or if you, um, you know, this idea, I got to find myself or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, um, just pick anything to get really good at. Just get really good at anything. You know, I don't care what it is. Just if you if you really try to get a black belt in jujitsu, or you really try to get fluent on the guitar, even when you have time, or you, you you really try to like anything, just get really good at a skill. You will learn things through that skill. You will learn things. You you will figure things out. You'll you'll um you the world will begin to open up to you. It won't be as much a mystery to you and you won't be so much of a mystery to yourself. There's an art to learning and you'll face plateaus and you'll face self doubt and you'll, and you'll have to come up against um, 
what will happen is you'll you'll make these um, you'll stagnate, and what you'll find is you're stagnating in your progress, probably because of a personality def um, defect or a personality or you are in your own way somehow, and you'll have to confront what it is that's getting in your own way. So good, and so I think that's a great so way to sort of shed the baggage and get closer to who you actually are and who you're supposed to be, right? So how do you do that? So how does someone do that, right? Because it sounds, it, I love what you, I, I love every day Do something difficult. Show up every day and do something difficult. Mm -hmm. I'll use Rogan again as an example, only because he's so famous and, and I, I'm close to him. So I said, well, you know, this is really true. I've known him since I was 27. And he just signed this huge deal. I've told the yeah. story before, but I'll call it again. He signed this huge deal. And I said, we started trying to dissect what it is that makes him so successful. And I just stopped the conversation. I said, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want you to think about that because you just have a magic dust to you and you're you're just so consistent. Let's not talk about that. But I, I but I, I do want to, I complimented him and I said, you've not changed. You've truly not changed. You genuinely are the same guy. Maybe That's more why. But That's why people love him so much. That's that's why people he's, love him so much. Yeah, and, and I said, what do you think it is that keeps your feet on the ground? And he goes, I think it's because I do shit that's really hard every day. Right. And my workout's like I want to die. And it's and, and that's why I know that if I if I I know that if if I can like overcome my inner bitch in that gym, then everything else is easy during the day. But it reminds you of how you're dying. It reminds you of how you're not that tough. It reminds you that everything is always, uh, no matter how rich you are, or whatever, you've got to constantly run up a hill and keep your body where it is. He's super disciplined about the way he eats and the way he works out and everything. When he says he's going to do something, he's fucking doing it. And nobody pulls him off that. We were at this pasta restaurant. This It's a place called Felix. And I took him there the first time. And it's like the best pasta. It's truly like they import the semolina from a part of Italy. You got to do audiobooks. Brian, real yeah. quick to interject. You ever you ever thought of doing voice or the, the voice for for a book, for an audiobook? No, no, not really. I've never liked my voice, but if you like it then maybe I will. No, it's just you no no, it's the passion. It's very solid. Like oh yeah. It. So 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 mm. uh, like th this is the pasta. And I you know there's there's a, there's a menu of pasta. I'm not a huge but this you have to eat the pasta at Felix. It was rated the best pasta in America. And he was on a no gluten, no wheat, no pot. He was trying this carnivore thing. And he goes, it's not happening. I was like, dude, just fucking eat some of the Amrit Chana right there. The, 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 please, I have some of this fucking, no, not doing it. And he had just a steak with some arugula because that's what he said he was going to do. I can't fucking do that. But if you can do that, if you set your your sort of sights on something, you say it's like if you say you're going to do it and you don't, it's a it's a defeat. Well, you so, can, Brian. You can do it. Yes. I mean, you could. You can. Other than other than me not being able to play in the NBA, there are some things I cannot do. <laughs> there are just yeah. some fucking things I cannot do. But there's a yeah. hell of a lot of fucking things I can. I could say one <laughs> thing, man. I I can say one thing, and I can say it with with my chest. Since I went to the army, that was kind of the defining moment for me. After that, I said, whatever I want to do with, right, other than I'm, I'm not about to become a pro boxer. There's certain things that are highly unlikely. They're just, I'm not going to become a rapper. They're just not going to, I'm not going to do them. Right, right. But whatever I do want to do and really feel confident I can do it at a high level, I'm doing it. I'm not turning back. It's go time. This podcast, yeah, this, this podcast, I bro. I can see it on you. I can see it with you. I believe that. Yeah. I believe it's, it, yes. because I I need I I I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and it makes me so fucking excited. And I don't care if it takes me ten years. I need to do it. Need to, right. need to. Yeah, love it. I love it. Love it. And you produce your own podcast and everything. You do all this on your own. So yeah, so I I've done mostly episodes in person, and I hire this guy in Pakistan to do the editing. Um. Recently, I've done a lot of virtual episodes. It just depends on who's available, where they are. But my goal definitely is to build a really nice studio. I was doing it in my apartment for a while. I have decent equipment, but the goal is to build a really nice studio. I have an idea of what I want it to look like and and do it from there and obviously travel if need be. You know, say you were, you know, you're in Cali and at some point you said, hey, man, I'd love to connect, come to Cali and bring my shit and come to Cali. 
you know, right. but I do want to have my, I do want to have my base here and do my thing. Right. Good. You know? Right. So, okay. So we, we, we went into the whole, the whole uh, idea of, of doing what you want to do. And I do want to get into the Israel thing at some point in terms of film comedy, all these things that you've done, where do you kind of see yourself now? I mean, I know you're doing the two shows. Well, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm not as big a fan of acting as I am stand up. I'm not as big a fan of, um, because I don't like the process. Like I like skiing. I just don't like the gear. I don't like what it takes to get up to the top of the mountain. I don't like the cold. And it's a good example of like acting is like being on a set. It's just, it's the death of fun. It's so boring. I've never been on a set in my life. I didn't, I didn't know how to admit this to anybody or myself, but I'd never been on a set where I didn't want it to be over. It's kind of like eating. Uh, you men yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned that, man. How come? What do you hate about it? I, I don't like the process. I don't like the piecemeal nature of shooting a TV show or a film. It's piecemeal. You're doing a page a day, sometimes three pages right. a day. It's not, it's not, it becomes this weird acting in pieces. And it's a peculiar skill set. You got to be very conscientious of your energy. I love stage, though. I love, um, and I love, I love stand up. You know, stand up is I'm up on there. I'm up there for an hour. That's amazing. And, is it uh, possible? Yeah. What's is it that? possible that you just need to be in charge of your own creativity? Like maybe when you're doing, yeah, your set probably, probably. It's all about original self-expression for me. So I'm writing a script now with a really talented uh, filmmaker, and th those are the kind of things. Like just just solving creative problems are, are what I. That's where I really, really just I love. There's nothing like it. It's a process of discovery. So when I wake up in the morning, I just start. I start thinking about. Um, what I want to write about and what what I'm trying to say, you know, I'm working on my my next one hour special and it's, you know, I'm 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 getting there, you know, I'm getting there, I'm getting I'm getting to where I want to be. That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you have? Can you think of your two either one or two best, either jokes or sets? It's a tough one. It's a tough one to to ask you. Well, so, you know, um, it is because somebody just came to me, Jeff Dye, my friend is a great comic, said, I just watched you on this thing. It was so good. You were doing this thing. And I forgot I'd done it. And it was it was some thing about it was I don't know. I, I think I was at my, my I was talking about what I'm going to do when I see a guy who's who's a wolf coming to pick my daughter up and how I'm going to sacrifice a goat on the front lawn. And I'm going to I'll be speaking in tongues. And then I'll be like, enjoy, enjoy your date, just so he knows I'm not the kind of guy the father to fuck with. And, you know, I, I remember that that was a, when I come up with those ideas and they work and I'm doing some crazy shit like talking in tongues or I'm speaking French on stage and talking about a street fight I had. That shit is, it's always such a, it's such a joy when it works. It's always like, oh shit, you know. So um, now, right now, my my special is really about I'm kind of tying it back to the Garden of Eden and how all of us want to, well, all of us kind of have this longing to get back to the Garden of Eden. But the truth is that safety and luxury are are um, are not, safety and comfort are not what a human being needs. I know that they seem to be like, maybe eventually one day I'll have certainty, safety, comfort, and that's the American dream, plenty of money on a yacht. And it's true, you don't want to be old and broke, but um, it's not, um, it ain't going to solve your problems. It's it's uh, if you get rid of all the snakes in your garden, you're going to start importing snakes back in, eventually. And that's kind of uh, that's the theme of what I'm trying to. Do. It's never yeah. yeah, it's never ending progress. It really is never ending progress. You just have to keep. Yeah, you don't whatever. want you don't want to uh, you don't want to stop building. You don't want to stop growing. You don't want to stop. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. The resistance, resistance. Um, and 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 discomfort and uh, uncertainty is uh, is 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 what adventure is maybe the fabric that adventure is the ingredients that that are required for an adventurous life. Life's a whole contradiction, isn't it, man? Huh? Yes, it really is. Every life is life is a, is, is a, a, a contradiction, and it's also um, think of what, think about where God think about where God put our G spot for straight men. It it doesn't doesn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doesn't make, doesn't make it very simple. That's right. Brother. I'm not about to. And I'm not really interested in finding out. So, 
that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what it is. That's fun. It's wild because everything that's good, right? It's, you know, your our brains are designed to keep us safe, but that is what destroys us completely. Yeah. If we, if, yeah. I mean, you know, you can eat the eat, eat a bunch of donuts and watch all uh, as much porn as you can. Tell me how you feel afterwards. You know, it just doesn't it's, it just doesn't work. It's like, you know. <laughs> It's it's so inter- it's just so fascinating, man. How this how that how life is in that sense. But it's just embrace it, and it's, and you'll be okay. Just embrace. I don't mind it at all. It is, you know. There's a beauty in that. There's a beauty in that also because so many people aren't willing to embrace it. So the more you are willing to embrace it, the more you meet those like-minded rare people. And right. then and then and again, saying "Oh, I'm rare" is like it's kind of cliche and whatever. But right. But oh, I had one point, and it's got to come back to me. Um, uh, I wanted what, to... what happened? What were we talking about? I'll, I'll jog your memory. Well, we were primarily talking about the contradiction of life, the, the paradox of... Yeah, a series of trade-offs. You know, it, 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 it's really true. That's, oh, that's I knew the... what it was. Keep keep going and I have, I'm going to hold my yeah. phone. It's about parenting. Yeah, so, it, go ahead. so much of it is so much of being intelligent is being able to hold two contradictory thoughts in your mind at one time. You know, there, there's it's it's not an easy thing really isn't but it's it's an important thing to try to do i'm trying to even think of an example what were you going to say well think of the example but i i wanted to get into a bit of a a bit off topic but it's very relevant because it has to do with hardship and and raising kids properly there are always there's always this conflict i hear from wealthy people especially the ones that didn't grow up wealthy they talk about how they're going to provide for their kids and you have some that are like Shaq, for example, he doesn't believe in giving his kids shit. And then you have someone like Patrick who still wants his kids to be very capable, but he's given them quite a lot, right? He's got a lot of money. Well, he's- but Patrick, Patrick's got the bet David schedule. So those those kids are always they're competing and they're oh. doing their shit. Oh no, yeah. no, no. That's the thing. So I'm I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just giving examples. Yeah. And then you have the, uh, so, you know, Patrick's, I guess, kind of in the middle where he's giving his kids a lot, but he's he's really making them work for it. He's really giving them uh, a regimen. And then you have yes. someone on the opposite extreme of Shaq, for example, that goes, you don't need to do a damn thing. Here's a portfolio of 100 rental properties. Sit on your ass until the day you die. Here Good you go. Good luck. Good luck right. with that. Good Those... luck with that. That's If your kid's never flown commercially, you should be arrested for child abuse. It doesn't work out. It's, 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 uh, that kid will give themselves a problem. There are, there are too many examples of very wealthy kids that spend their, their, their twenties and thirties in and out of rehab. Look at Cher's son. You, Hollywood is littered with the children of the rich and famous and it didn't work out for them. Oh yeah. It's so true. My son, my son knows my son and my, my daughter, I don't have to do anything. I don't know. She's just so driven, but my son knows he's like me. So, you know, the, 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 the default is he's a, he's a guy, so he's, he's funny, but he, he likes his, he likes his, uh, he likes his leisure time. And I said, listen, dude, you're getting your black belt in jujitsu. That's what's happening here. You're going to get really good at something and you're going to get your black belt. How old is you're going to rest on high school. You're going to do things that are hard and then we'll talk, you know, How old is he now? You can't raise a kid. He's 12, but you can't raise a kid in Santa Monica, California. You know where they can where they have a lot of stuff. You know it's 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 not good. So it's, yeah, that's just what that's what's interesting to me. That's what I'm hoping to seek from talking to a lot of people I look up to, because I want my kids to have more than I do, but I also I want them to to go through hard. To, they're going to anyway, no matter what, right? Whether they're spoiled or not. But I want them to go send through. Them, the, send them to Israel and make them join the IDF. Honestly, yeah. I'd be very proud. I have a you know it's funny. I have a funny feeling one of my sons, I don't know how many sons I'll have, but I have a feeling one of my sons will do it. I have a, I have a really good feeling about it. Remember your cut, your children come through you, not from you. So they'll, they'll choose their own path and you'll, you'll be met. I'm not going to push them. No, I'm not going to push them to, if he asks me what I support it, I'd be like, absolutely. I'd be proud of you. You know, yeah. it's up to you. Yeah. You'll find my daughter it. too. If my daughter wants to go, I'd be, I'd be a little more, I'd push against it more. I'd just say, why do you want to do it so badly? yada 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 but i would i would support her if she wanted to yeah yeah fair fair yeah so pretty fair. much so pretty much you would say somewhere somewhere i guess in the middle where where do you stand in that regard 
kind of just, I guess, the way Patrick has it in a way? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I um, you know, I do push my son and I don't have to push my daughter. She's, she pushes herself maybe too much. So some of this is personality, but um, uh, I, 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 I just, I'm a huge believer in, in again, resistance and giving children the ability, the, the, uh, the ability to learn that learning is its own art. There's a great book by Josh Waiskin called The Art of Learning. And Josh, Josh is a Marcelo Garcia black belt, but also a chess master. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recommend that book to a lot of people because um, there is an art to learning. And you don't, you cannot learn the art of learning until you try to get really good at something. And and uh, that's, that is the, that is, that is the one thing that is, I don't compromise on. You know, it's like, we're, we're going to jujitsu three days a week. And I said to him, I, I show, I show him, I go, if you want to be really good, all you have to do is just math, practice an hour more than the other kids. You know, that, and that's up to you. And sometimes I do that to him. Like he doesn't want to work out or he doesn't want to like box or he doesn't want to do things. I go, all right, do you want to just, do, you want to just sit around today? Should, should we just sit around for the weekend? You want to just watch TV? Like, well, just tell me, maybe I shouldn't push you. Maybe we shouldn't do anything. Maybe you should just sit there and, you know, you can, you can, we can just eat. You want to eat like donuts. What do you want to do? I'll give you everything you want. You want, you want soda and donuts. Should we just not do anything? He's like, you're being dramatic. I look, no, no, I'm, I'm really asking you. I'm, I'm asking if you, if that's what you want. I'm well, asking you if you truly don't want to do anything and you just want to do, you know, maybe play video games all day. It's so funny then, though, because Brian, if you, you, you know this already, and this is why you're doing it. You're asking him so he can come to his own conclusion. If you were to tell him, then much higher of a likelihood he'd give you much more of a pushback. But he's sitting yeah. there questioning, like, wait yeah. a minute, do and I want to sit him? We, yeah, after we train, I go like this. I go, oh, look at look at how you feel. How do you feel, honestly? How's your body feel? How's your energy? You faced up to a lot of shit you didn't want to do. And how do you feel now? You know, you feel good. You know, you feel good. It sucked. We we, we, we did some stuff. We, we drilled jujitsu. We were hitting mitts. I was throwing punches at you. You had to learn how to flip. I mean, we're doing all that stuff. How's it feel? You know, you don't like doing it. He was fucking a pain in the ass. You're 12. You don't want to feel like 40 minutes of training is a long time. An hour of training is a long fucking time for a 12 year old. And most but 12 year olds aren't great. doing any of that shit. Yeah. I know. And he feels great. So that's the idea. It felt great. You know, it's great. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. It's, it's yeah. so valuable, dude. Um, it is. Wait, there was another thing. No, because there's so many things that I that I'm thinking. Uh, there was one particular thought that I had, and I think, oh yeah, well, okay, I remember now. I didn't have that. It's pretty deep stuff, but I mean, my grandmother was definitely tough, but a father figure to tell me to really push me through things and kind of bring me along on the fishing trips, take me skiing, do this, do that. So I had to do a lot of those. You know, she didn't know how to ride a bike. She didn't know how to drive. You know, I had to, she didn't know how to swim. I had to learn all those things. Uh, wow. There's... You were raised by your grandmother? Yes. What? Where were your parents? My mother was uh, not very with it. She was homeless. She was homeless most of her life. Was a very difficult child. She, uh, you know, was found in a hotel room, unfortunately, a couple of years ago. I never met her, so there wasn't really much emotion. But she tried to reach out. My grandmother didn't let her. My mom didn't, you know, throw me in a garbage was she, can. Was she, was she, she was mentally ill, I guess, obviously. I, I, I would say so. I don't know the gist of it. My grandmother didn't really tell me that much. Um, but it seems it's pretty obvious. Thing. And then and then my father was never really in the picture. It was kind of one of those things. Hmm. So he was never, you know, he wasn't intending for, for the pregnancy to happen. He was, you know, a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, I guess. And Did you then ever meet my, him? Huh? Did you ever meet him? I haven't met him. I haven't met him, but I recently met his side of the family. I can probably meet him, but I guess it's, you know, I'm busy with my life and my life has gone on without him and it's not really going to yeah. change much. You know, I, I don't think I'm just understanding yeah. the dynamic of it. I'm not even really interested. Yeah, you, had, you had to raise yourself. You had to raise yourself. Yeah. Right. My grandmother, I have to say my grandmother did play a massive role, but she was also, there was a good mixture of get up and do what you got to do. You fell down and scraped your leg, put on some Bassett Trace and put a Band-Aid on and, and and continue on with your day. But there was also a lot of nurture where she 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 always said, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Not you can do whatever you want, that for sure. She's still alive? She has, she has dementia now, but she's alive. Man, you, you raised yourself. That's, 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 uh, 
that's that's wild it's not easy yeah it was tough i mean thank god i had great people in my you know my my friends and their parents i used to go to them they came to me for you know for shabbat and you know when i was religious back in the day so i had a very good childhood man i had a very healthy childhood it wasn't you know i didn't do i wasn't able to do anything that exciting in terms of these vacations i went on a plane for the first time when i was 18 but there was wow. nothing wow. there was nothing tragic though meaning i was thank god i wasn't abused in any way i wasn't bullied right. you know i had a lot of friends growing up but i had the bare minimum well, you're, thing. Kind of a, you're kind of a tough guy too right i mean you're pretty physically strong and stuff right i mean do you, do you train and stuff uh i'm not a, a pro fighter in any way i did krav maga in the army i've been through i've been in some I've been in some fights in my day. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm a big guy. I'm a strong dude for sure. Yeah, I definitely would say so. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's what, it's what, it's what happens. Yeah. And it's definitely yeah, you, only. You got to build armor. You got to build some armor. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're, it's on you, my list. You, are, you are your first responder. So. For sure. Yeah. For sure, man. Yeah. But it's also a, me a mental thing, man. But, you know, it, it, it's so much more of a mental than a physical thing, you know, especially because you're a big fan of fighting. I really like fighting. So just to clarify for anyone's listening, we're talking about professional, you know, uh, liking the art of fighting. Yeah. Although I did it definitely, I, I can't say I didn't enjoy the fights to some degree that I've been in. Um, but, uh, and I, but I never started them. That's something important to mention. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, we can talk, we could talk about the on and off camera. They're pretty, they're pretty funny. They're pretty wild. Um, but the mental thing is the is the biggest thing meaning mm -hmm. forget about just loving the gym and putting on muscle you know i'm definitely a muscular guy it's i know there's certain things i'm willing to do if i needed to you know and i think people know that if, if my wife is in danger my kids are in danger i'll do some pretty fucked up shit if i need to yeah <laughs> like i have yeah. the capacity to i don't i'm not i'm not a ufc fighter but i have the capacity to do it if i needed to yeah that's uh that's right. Having the capacity is important, I think. It's a Jordan Peterson thing. He says it all the time. You know, it doesn't That's make like Tim you... Kennedy. Tim Kennedy, the Green Beret, and, you know, he was on uh, Rogan and he was also an MMA fighter, one of the best, period. He's a, he's a good friend. And Tim said, uh, he was on Rogan and he goes, make no mistake. And Tim Kennedy. I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. He goes, make no mistake. I will wear your skin. If you yeah. come from my family, I'll wear your skin. Skin. I will yeah. I will unleash violence you've never even it's like oh, yeah man. dude I, I can do I say it's this on camera I say this on camera I I I'm very net I have a lot of self-control you'll almost I don't I I've maybe lost my shit and yelled probably I mean it's happened but I very rarely lose my cool very rarely and if I do I believe it's for a very good reason yeah but yeah man I mean <laughs> well, you know, there's that, there's that, I think there's that thing. You define yourself along the lines you're willing to defend. You, you, you well, you define yourself, but, but really along the lines you're willing to not defend, but fight for too. Like, what are you willing to fight for? That's a good way to define yourself. There are different right. instinct ways of defining a human being, especially when you're writing about somebody. But just if you think about yourself, what are you willing to fight for? And that's probably what would you be willing to not only fight for, maybe even die for? You think about that. Most of us walk around without that, without those lines. We haven't really come to those conclusions but there are things that you know there are lines in the sand and that probably is a good way to define yourself and another way to define yourself is what do you honestly want what do you honestly revere what do you truly what is your god what what do you really revere are you is it a false god or is it a higher truth and then the, because you come to this conclusion like there are things you want in life and there are things you need and sometimes to get what you actually need to be a complete human being, you've got to give up what you want. And that's a that's that's the, a classic example of a trade off, uh, a, a walking contradiction, right? You have to understand that you have these wants, and you want them so badly, and they could be comfort, money, status, power, success, whatever it might be. You might need something else. And sometimes when you give up what you want and you go for what you need, if you give up what you want, you'll get what you need. There will become this new equilibrium within your, you know, your, your personage, if you will. Right. Well, and, you would say that that's really a defining characteristic of discipline. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's also a courageous, a courageous act. It's also a heroic act. 
This is why we love movies when the guy, you know, finally stops thinking about himself and sacrifices his own life for, you know, the, the higher good, if you will. Right. So the, the, these are, are religious and moral heroes, whether they're Gandhi or Martin Luther King or, you know, or Jesus Christ or, you know, whoever it is. This is these are the people that people revere because they put themselves, uh, their, their own physical bodies below a higher ideal. You know, I so. think well, if we're talking haircuts in as an example, uh, the way Joe sacrificed his hair <laughs> and the way Andrew Schultz sacrificed a good a hairdo for a really, really strange one. Yeah, I agree. Real... I'm right with you on that. I think, Rafi, I can always count on you to bring it down to that. And you're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I wish I had Andrew's hair. I wouldn't. Would I ever... Him. When I ever meet, and it doesn't help that he has a German last name either. That that just makes it easy. right. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, and and that mustache. Let's keep that mustache it's, long. Yeah. He just no, he's no. the dude though. Andrew has a one skill he's got is he knows how to get away with shit that most people couldn't. He's because he's because, funny. He's funny and he's fair. Yeah. Yeah, funny. and it also because people know that at his core he's a good dude. Yep. So they they know there's no malintent with what he's saying. He's a good guy. That's right. That's so that's right. really what it, they're like. Yeah, he's a good dude. He doesn't mean it, and they people relate right. to that. It's so funny. But yeah. his haircuts, his haircuts, so bad. Rocky, I gotta I gotta end this soon. Yeah. Um, because I've got another thing to do. But okay. um, I got you, man. Ask me anything else. Yeah, I mean, how much time do you have left, realistically? Because well, I would have not, not a lot. I gotta get to uh, I gotta get to my studio to do a podcast. Yeah. Okay, because I didn't really know how much time we had. I, I I guess I wanted to get into the Israel thing a little, but if if it's if if you want to hop off, man, it's fine. You know, I'm not gonna. We can do that. We can do that for two point We'll do this again. It's fun. We'll do it in person. That's what we'll do. I would you love know? to. Man. I would yeah. love to. Let me, let me know yeah. when we can do something. Yeah, man. I love so, it. Cool. Yeah, dude. I had a I had a blast. It was great. And we'll we, we had a lot of deep talk. We'll I'm sure we'll have we'll get to know each other. We'll have a lot of we'll have a lot of laughs. Yeah, you know? bro. Got it. I'm glad we did this. We we will uh, we will we will stay connected. I'm good, brother. I would love to. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Brian Callen. I'm really, uh, dude. It's I'm just the kind of I've had some big guests, man. But I I created this thing from nothing, and you're you're fucking right here. It's it's it's. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. We'll do it in person, man. It'll be a, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll look forward it. to it. I'll be guys, down. I'll be down in Miami sooner than later. So. Sounds great, man. You know where to find me, man. You have my number. So ladies and gents, I hope you love this episode as much as I did. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, leave your comments. Follow Brian on his Instagram. It's very simple to find it. Uh, in terms of YouTube, if you have any questions whatsoever in finding this this uh, this gentleman, let me know and I will make sure to uh, give you the, the scoop. Great dude. Thank you for coming. I appreciate your insights, man. It's it's really been it. really been great. So, uh, it's guys, my pleasure, man. Yes. my pleasure. I'm going to ask, I'm going to be calling you about advice when it comes to uh, real estate in Florida. Feel free, man. Feel free. Feel free. Happy to be a resource. Awesome. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Till next time. Thank you, brother. I'll talk to you. Bye.